Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent. This is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 142, where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net, and I will do my best to answer them. This first one is called, Hi Mark. Hi Mark, it's me, your future ex-girlfriend, LOL. I caught that on one of your shows with Patricia. I laughed so hard. Love you, Mark. I am listening to your 200th episode this very moment while composing this email. Congratulations, you are simply amazing. Also, I'm looking forward to your new book. I purchased four copies of your first book and have gifted them to friends and to the inmates I work with. I spread the truth in my way. I am very open about my being a flat earther and answer any questions I'm asked. I know I've planted seeds along my way, so time will tell if any of them sprout. I noticed all the exclamations I used in this email, but I can't help it. There is so much excitement going on and much to be excited about. Hope you make it this way again soon as you have a vacation spot here with us in the Muskok Muskogas. Muskogas, that's in Canada, by the way. M-U-S-K-O-K-A-S. Hugs to you, my friend. And that's from Bronca. I met Bronca up in Canada. She's a very nice person. All right, moving on. And possibly my future ex-girlfriend. This one's called Take on the World Ohio Conference Details. All right. I, I think I just saved that in there because I am going to be speaking at the Take on the World Conference. You know what? I'm just going to give you the details. Why not? When? It's August 22nd through 25th. Where? Belua Beach, Vermilion, Ohio. That's B-E-U-L-A-H. Beulah. I do not pronounce some things well. Uh, other flat earthers or other flat earth speakers include Rob Skiba, Robbie Davidson, Nate Wolf, uh, Daryl Lee, Rick Hummer, Chad Taylor, Michael Solomon, and Nathan Thompson. Over the four days, it's going to be thirty speakers, three stages, seventy sessions, discovery and fun for the whole family. So check it out at uh, is there a website for this? Pretty sure there is. But if you're interested, contact, you want direct information on this, contact Chris Bailey, and I'll give out his phone number real quick. That's 440-668-6373. He's the organizer for the Take on the World conference. So there you go. And I will be there. This one's called God. Hi, Mark. Do you believe in God and Jesus Christ? Be bless Eve. Uh, yes, I do. I, I was raised born again Christian on a rural island up in uh, north of Seattle called Whidbey, W H I D B E Y. I mean, the north end's not r rural, it's, but it's 50 miles away. It's a really long, skinny island. Uh, in fact, there's a part in the middle which is not even a mile wide, uh, but most of the island's barely even three miles wide, I think. It's, it's really, really thin. I mean, there's some, there's some wider parts down towards the, the, the bottom, but it's, it's really a really thin place. Anyway, enough about geography. Uh, yeah, I was, I was raised in uh, the Christian Missionary Alliance Church. It was evangelical, born again. And uh, church was not just a Sunday thing. We also had youth group, and we did vacation Bible school, and I went to Camp Malibu up in British Columbia one summer. Uh, and everything was really, really great. And uh, then I fell away from that. In fact, it's interesting you mentioned that because I'm the the chapter in the book I'm writing. Uh, I'm actually up to the religious chapter when I, where I talk about the Bible and the five religions and how flat Earth plays into everything. And I fell away from that when I went to university and uh, got into tech. I mean, the combination of going to university off island. And then getting into the technology fields, at, you know, playing video games for a living and all that, uh, it really, I mean, I didn't even, I didn't even look at church uh, for better part of 20 years. And then Flat Earth pulled me back into it, pulled me back into spirituality, pulled me back into God. Uh, and that's, I've heard the same thing from a lot of people, including a lot of hardcore Christians who have said that they have never seen a recruiting tool like Flat Earth. Because remember, the default shape of the Flat Earth just, just screams that there's it was created by somebody and if it's created uh, then there's creator and then you've got to wrestle with who created it so anyway moving on this next one's called panama canal hi mark john bailey in auckland new zealand regarding emails 141 panama canal you said in a reply something like you need to the need for lock gates was due to the sea currents on the west coast being higher on the east coast 
I think that you will find the only need for lock gates is due to the need to raise the ships up and over and higher land masses between coasts and the seas are actually level on both east and west sides. See my drawing attached. Keep up the great work, John. I don't know if that's actually true. I think there's a slight difference and it's probably because of current swell and the underwater conveyor system. If you guys don't know what the underwater conveyor system is like exactly what it sounds like. It's this massive underwater current system that, that travels uh, around the plane in our case. So I and remember if it's even one inch higher on one side for whatever reason it's going to uh, it's it's going to flow the other way all the time and so because you're not gonna be able to get that much water uh, normally it would equalize but you're not going to get that much water through the Panama Canal to actually equalize anything over any period of time so I would disagree with that uh, and in fact look it up if you get a chance somebody look this up for me I'm pretty sure that it's not absolutely the same elevation on both sides even though instinctively it's supposed to be um, Anyway, but but let me know. Plus, I gotta I gotta got ask. You know, if you have the need for lock gates, you know, to you know rising, you know, to rise the ships lower and higher in the masses between coasts. And I don't know if that's gonna necessarily cut it because if that was the case, why not just build two Suez canals, one going one way and one going the other way, for the Panama Canal. You know, why why not do exactly what you do with the Suez Canal? But who knows? I may be wrong. I, I'm. I, I try not to dwell too much. For me, I don't care too much about the Panama Canal, uh, the the engineering details. Only that so many people died during it. In fact, I talked about that during a uh, an interview I did down in Tacoma, which I I call it my uh, my exclusive conspiracy, which is the Panama Canal. I, I nobody else thinks it's a conspiracy except for me. And that is, we killed 6,000 American civilians down the Panama Canal. And yes, they died of malaria and yellow fever. And the, the, the conspiracy comes in is, did the United States government know that they were going to lose that many people? Yes, they did. Because the French lost three times that many. In fact, they lost over 20,000 people. So many that they gave up on the project. The, the, the Panama Canal was supposed to be French. And they could not finish it because they just lost so many guys. And we even, after we invented mosquito netting and insect repellent, uh, even after that, we still lost 6,000 men. That's where the conspiracy comes in. And that is a, was it worth it? Did the ends justify the means? Uh, in this case, yes, because you can put a price on human life and it became a, mass, a massively successful toll road and strategic choke point militarily. So it was totally worth it. Uh, 6,000 men, we would have, we would have sacrificed 10,000 for the project and then lied about the numbers. Just saying. But thank you, John. Hope you're doing well down in New Zealand. It was great to spend time with you and uh, get driven around to all the wonderful places. New Zealand, again, if I ever get bet, you know thrown out of the United States for whatever reason, hopefully not, because um, America is still the, the greatest show in town, uh, New Zealand, is that is just a wonderful place. If, anyone, if you have the means to go to New Zealand, uh, and I haven't even been to the South Island. I only went to the North Island with, Auck with Auckland. It is just gorgeous. Just an amazing place. <laughs> Uh, this one's called Electric Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. Just thought I flick you an email. Really? Flick me an email regarding my findings on the electrochemical operation of the sun and moon. I have related the sun and the moon to the operation of galvanic and thermal galvanic cell, which there is one-to-one -one correlation. The earth being a salt bridge. Oh, I know what you're doing there. The ocean is an electrolyte, the moon an anode, and the sun a cathode. I have more information on my channel. The video that explains it best is the one called Electric Flat Earth. The others are investigations into each part of the cell. The response to the idea has been extremely poor. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure why that is. Well, it's, it's, you got to be able to get your head around it. Maybe people think it's nuts or I haven't explained it well enough or it's too complicated for people, even though I... I think the information is valid and worthy of investigation, and to me, all natural phenomena cannot be explained well without including electrochemical mechanisms. Thanks for your time, Lucas. You know what? I'm going to, just for that, uh, I'm going to read you the name of, well, the channel anyway. Check it out. It's called LC King, and it's got a couple hundred subscribers, and he talks about the electric ocean, electrochemical grid hypothesis. Hey, you know what? I'm not going to shoot it down. Why would I? I open up my day with Flat Earth. Moving on. This one's called... 
overdue hello content suggestions and a compliment from Veal Armstrong. And he actually signs this Veal Armstrong. Uh, hello, Mark. I'm a longtime listener of your content on YouTube and recent Netflix documentary. That being said, this is my first time reaching out. I generally listen to your shows, interviews, and Q&A either on my commute or evening four-mile hikes with my dog, Gibson. I have always had a difficult time accepting the heliocentric model, even as a kid. In particular, I have never felt or believed that the Earth spins at a thousand plus miles per hour at the equator, nor do I believe that the human eyes are capable of interpreting objects at a distance of 93 million miles. There you go. Let alone 237,000 miles with the ability to distinguish surface detail with unaided assistance as we can. Suggestion one, could you try to get experts in the field of optometry and optics to help provide their expertise on the mechanics and parameters of human sight capabilities and possibly shed some light on how the brain interprets and misinterprets images near and far. I feel this subject matter has been mostly underrepresented in the flatter space. You know what, you're absolutely right. So if there's anybody out there in the optics field or optometry, uh, please contact me. I'm easy to find. Suggestion two, a while back, I made some honest video contributions, but totally lacked the ability and time to promote my content. I have primarily targeted space agencies, NASA, in my offerings. First, a song I wrote, played, sang, and recorded called Rocket Ship. Secondly, uh, a 10-minute rant on the International Space Station that lends to tends to lean up against some comedic overtones as I ask NASA's legitimate questions I have inspired following Peggy Wilson 666 days in space take a listen at your leisure should you like the song put it to use where you feel appropriate lastly I am pretty big skeptic and generally use a fair amount of pause and caution when consuming any content provider pundit or subject matter expert that being said I have to commend you on your ability to continually stay consistent in your message also you have an unbelievable skill in neutralizing opponents and breaking them down enough to impact the tone of the conversation almost at immediate onset I bet you were able to talk your way out of a lot of jams growing up as a kid. Well, thanks for your time and continued success with your endeavors and getting to the truth of what our world really looks like and how it all works, whatever it may be. One of these days, I intend to call in respectfully, Veal. Wow. Thanks, Phil. And Veal. And thank you for the, for the compliment. Uh, I don't often get that. And it's not that I try. It just comes naturally to me which is I try to relate to them. I try to be empathetic. I try to put myself into their shoes. And once you can do that, once you can get into the head of your opponent, they're not an enemy anymore. And they realize that, and things actually go a lot smoother. Because they're not, you know, if you automatically go defensive, you, you automatically brace yourself, sword in hand, uh, they tend to, you know, attack like you have a sword in hand. But if you... Just put yourself out there and say, hey, you know, can't we all just get along? That's a little Rodney King reference. All right, moving on. This one's called Australian Interviews. Hi, Mark. I've grabbed all of your Australian interviews here. Hope I haven't missed any. Hope you don't mind if I put them on a channel. And he did. And it's called First Last. And thank you for that. I don't know why you just put the Australian things, but you must be because it's you're in that area. So thank you, uh, and yeah, I have been doing a lot of uh, southern southern hemisphere, for lack of a better term, outer ring stuff in New Zealand and Australia, and that was even before I went to the New Zealand conference down in Auckland, which is interesting. In fact, I, in fact, I just did one really recently on Australian television where the subject matter expert that came against me was an American. All right, this one's called "The Moon Is Plasma." And that's an article. So look, it's on Bing. You can look that up. The moon is plasma. That's a news story. Fascinating. Uh, this one's called No Subject. Mark, I have solved some technical problems with the flat earth idea. Please contact me. This is new stuff. It all came to me over several days of problem solving with rotating model. And that's from Susan. Susan, no cliffhangers. Don't tell me you solved something and contact me for the information. Just send it to me. Uh, I get so many emails, it's going to be a while before I even look at your second email again. This one's called, Why Flat Earthers Don't Believe in Trees. Yep, that's an article on, uh, who's that on? One second, I plant trees for a living, but flat earthers tell me they don't exist by William Thompson. That was May 29th on QZ.com. Quartz, oh, Quartz Ideas. 
So yeah, it's the Quartz website. Yeah, obviously play enough on the whole no trees on flat earth, which is an interesting story. Or interesting idea. Again, I'm not going to shoot it down. It's fascinating. This one's called Includes Moon Eclipse. Mark, my idea also solves lunar eclipse without extra invisible planets. And it wasn't even signed by anybody. Okay, that's the worst cliffhanger I've ever seen because you're not even you're not even saying, hey, contact me for more information and or giving me a link sent from except for sent from my Samsung Galaxy smartphone. That's not an endorsement, by the way. Uh, that's all that's all you're gonna send me? Come on. Send me more more details than that. No cliffhangers. This one's called Equatorial Line. Mark, please help me. My child, who is 13 and also a flat earther since she was 10, is in Quito, Ecuador. At the moment, her group went to the Equatorial Line yesterday, and the guide showed them an experiment with a kitchen sink. Uh huh. He put the sink right over the line and released the plug, and the water just dropped out with no spinning effect. Then he carried the sink over 10 feet and once again released the water. It drained clockwise. Then he went to the other side of the line and proceeded the experiment showing the kids how it spins counterclockwise. I can explain almost everything when it comes to flat earth, but I'm having trouble with this one. I also noticed in the video that the guide seemed to absolutely help push the water in different directions, but he was sneaky about it. Please help me explain this effect to my child. She looks so heartbroken over this idea. I'm going to need a good explanation to respond when she gets back. Any ideas? Best regards, Luke. Absolutely. I've got an answer for this one. And yes, you're, what you just mentioned there, and that is... It is uh, one side of the equator or the other side is going to be like within 10 feet of an equator is going to be uh, so negligible. It's not going to happen. So how they pull it off, it's a little sleight of hand. It's just for the tourists. If you want the, the best experiment I've ever seen online, it's not even a flat earther, which makes it even better for the globalists that, uh, that argue this. It's uh, in fact, it's one of the globalist go to scientific sites. It's called smarter every day, millions of subs. And this guy is really detailed when it comes to doing experiments. And he you can look it up. Uh, the channel's called smarter every day. And it's called toilet. No, uh, what is it? Toilet water experiment. I think that's what it's called. <clears throat> but look up his channel, you'll find it. Uh, and what he did was he, and again, it's perfect. I'll describe it for you really fast. He took two giant kids wading pools, one in the North Southern Northern hemisphere, one out in Australia. He had his friend, it was simulcast at the exact same time with the exact same equipment. They built custom kids wading pools. They filled them up. They let the water sit for hours. So it was absolutely still with a central drain plug, central drain plug. They, and just to make sure they didn't disturb the water at all. They took eyedropper of food coloring and they put patterns in the water so they could tell exactly which way it was going. And then they pulled the plugs at the exact same time and filmed it at the exact same time. And the spin was so unbelievably gradual, he said it was basically negligible, meaning it might as well not exist. And he was trying to figure out where this myth this came from. And it was just what what everyone had said. It was like, oh yeah, you know, the 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 drains are going one way or the drains are going another way. And remember, you can do this with your kitchen sink. You know, you just move the the faucet one way or the other, and you can get it spin one way or the other. And he basically came out and said at the end, he's going, yep, whatever. You know, he goes, it does not exist for for all intents and purposes. And you know what? I will send this to you. Uh, I will I will email this person back. I'll put this in my to do pile. Uh, but thank you for asking that question. And no, your daughter is going to be absolutely fine before this is over. Uh, this one's called a stat from Google. And this is from a writer who I met down in Denver, a uh, really good writer. In fact, I'm pretty sure she was nominated for a Pulitzer. Um, she says, hey, Mark, Google PR sent me this new stat. And this is from Google directly. I'm reading it verbatim. We recently announced that we'll begin reducing recommendations of borderline content or videos that could misinform users in harmful ways, such as videos promoting a phony miracle cure for a serious illness, claiming the earth is flat, or making blatantly false claims about historic events like 9-11. This will be a gradual change that will initially only affect recommendations of a very small set of videos in the United States. While it's still ramping up, a preliminary look shows that it is limiting the spread of borderline content and harmful harmful information of our platform in fact flat earth videos <laughs> of all you know if, if this was designed for us <clears throat> absolutely for us you know what i should include this in the book um <clears throat> uh experienced an estimated 67 percent drop in clicks since the above launch 
She then asked, uh, this raises a lot of questions. 67% a drop over what period? Do they have an official flat earth classification for videos? Can I see the data? I'm guessing no. My question for you though, have any flat earthers ev even seen evidence of this drop? Earlier you said you haven't been hugely affected by changes in YouTube, but have others. Thanks. You know what? I'm going to use that quote in the book. It's too, it's too good not to use it. And yeah, yeah, we have seen it. Absolutely. We, we have seen a drop in, and that is because, yeah, they're, they're not recommending it as much, but at the same time, <clears throat> I'm not really that upset because they recommended us for three years straight and they, we don't need to be recommended on YouTube anymore. Not, not that much anyway. They really, really helped us. And now they're taking the foot off the gas. Are they censoring flat earth videos? No. Uh, are they sort of, I mean, is it censorship when you're just not recommending it as much? Yeah, maybe. I don't think it's I don't think it's that severe though. So, uh, but I understand the concern and and look, they were gonna they in fact was interesting was that quote at the end, which was okay, we're going after snake oil, nine eleven, and flat Earth, and the only number that they actually mentioned at the end was oh yeah, by the way, flat Earth is already dropping because of that, and it's like okay, so you were only going after flat Earth. They had to lump the other two in because it would seem too obvious to go after it was interesting why didn't you go after anti-vaxxers instead of snake oil salesmen well why wouldn't you just do i mean because that's what the media is using they're going anti-vaxxers flat earth and 9-11 truthers which is an interesting though you know combo but chain to swap out anti-vaxxers with snake oil i thought that was interesting this one's called uh this is from first last the the guys that are actually uh doing my reproducing my my Australian interviews. Hi, Mark. Thanks for the sub. Keep up the great work. Uh, these are the most often used space experts seen on Australian TV. I'm sure there's more, but if you need research on them, when they might battle you again one day, like recently on Studio 10, now you know them. Yep. Astrophysicist, Dr. Brad Tucker. He's an American and he works with uh, every, anybody down the Southern Hemisphere. Also, astronomer Frederick Garnett. Well, he's also known as Fred Watson. Carl Kruzenicki, often referred to, referred to as Dr. Carl, and Dr. Charles Lineweaver from the Australian National University is an expert in astronomy. And astron sorry, last one, astronomer David Finley. I've actually heard of him. Uh, I'm sorry, there's one more, Dr. Jason Held. Yeah, yeah, good, all good stuff. And I will look for all of them. I was glad that Studio 10 actually brought somebody out, but it didn't... Uh, didn't help them in the long run. This one's called New Flat Earther, Thor Movie Connections. Hey, Mark, I live in Maui and am new to the flat earth and totally believe it. Why is nobody talking about Thor and Hollywood giving hints about a flat disc world surrounded by ice such as Asgard? Is it an exact replica of the flat earth we live on? Is Thor not basically the same story as Jesus and his brother being the devil? Yeah. Yeah. The, the Norse version of it. Yeah. Just thought uh, this was too painfully obvious. Can you talk about this? Aloha, Elise. And yeah, okay. So the Thor I've got mixed feelings on because one, yeah, it shows a flat world and on the whole Asgard thing. Uh, but the part where it doesn't help us is the whole cosmic waterfall. Uh, and that is you've got an endless supply of, of generating water that goes in one direction and then falls off into space. That's the, so it's actually a two-part thing. One, that the water, you know, that there's no edge. You know, there's no solid edge to hold the water in. That doesn't jibe well with us. And the cosmic waterfall, honestly, does, goes straight into fantasy. And, and people immediately start making ties to, oh, well, it's got to be fantasy. Uh, but the other thing is it's it's in space. And we never claim that there, the flat Earth is in space. Because there doesn't need to be space. Because we can't reach it. If, if the stars are just in the ceiling and you can never reach them, then they don't have to be uh, these massive bodies that are millions of light years away. As Carl Sagan said, uh, the universe seems to be a lot of empty, wasted space. Now, it's inefficient, and you're calling God inefficient, and I wouldn't do that. This one's called Flat Earth Saturn Death Cult. Hi, Mark. Have you heard of the Saturn Death Cult conspiracy? I have not. Uh, I mean, I've heard of it, but I have not read up on it. Uh, if not, you can go to SaturnDeathCult.com and get further information. I bring this to your attention because in the not-too-distant past, ancient civilizations claimed that Saturn was once our sun. They said Saturn was the best sun. There are thousands of petroglyphs around the world depicting this theory. Saturn was supposedly in a stationary position directly above the North Pole. In order for the stationary polar position to work, the Earth has to be flat because this was observed from positions on Earth. 
below the equator. Therefore, ancient civilizations also bear testimony that the Earth is flat. Thanks for all your hard work, F and I, F, <laughs> FYI. I'm an engineer working for Boeing. I will not give out your name. Cool. That's awesome. Neat. Saturn Death Cult. Could help us. I mean, the name's not great, but it's still pretty good. I mean, it'd be good for like a tattoo. This one's called... Uh, this article of mine... Uh, let's see. Oh, no, that's, that's personal. That is from, uh, one of, he's a flat earther, but he's one of our, uh, one of my guild mates as well. His name is Darren Wagner. Great guy. I will read up his article if I get a chance. This one's called Flat Earth and Debate. Hi, Mark. I'm Craig from Fight the Flat Earth. I'd like to debate you. Please respond and we can arrange a date and time. Craig, fight the flat earth. Uh, no. No, sorry, I'm only debating uh, people on television networks and radio shows. And I mean, well, like, for example, the the astrophysicist from the uh, the Studio 10 thing that I did in Australia. Uh, sorry, I, you know, girls got to have standards. So, uh, no, I'm not de I'm not debating troll channels of any capacity. And you know who you guys are. But hey, I do appreciate that you're trolling us because remember, you're only helping us with the metrics. Uh, you know, keep keep fighting us though. You might win. Probably not. But hey, this one's called alert? Question marks. Hi, Mark. Hope you're doing well. I ran to these new stuff today, and it's been kind of alarming. I cannot say for sure if it's 100% true or not. Sorry, I was interrupted by a cat. Uh, I just know that when people panic out of any kind of doomsday fear, they forget everything else. To me, it sounds like a diversion because they could stop the truth from being spread, and now they have brought up a new game. Brian Austin Lambert claims that he is a Bible believer and a flat earther. He starts with a great presentation about flat earth and then he suddenly starts talking about EM doomsday in the coming new year. The other one is the mud flood event in 1819. Now I've seen a new flat earther actually turning their focus to the upcoming doomsday. Since you can communicate with many flat earthers through your broadcast, I thought I should share it with you too. Here is one of the alarming videos. I do have very good videos about Flat Earth. Some of them are shared and some I made them myself. For example, that mad TV clip about the moon missions with George Carlin. Take a look if you get a chance. It's yup yup0123. <laughs> Is that an Archer reference? Thanks for all you do. All the best. Farah. F-A-R-A. Farah? Farah. Cool. Awesome. All right, this one's called So Confused Help. Uh, let's see here. Hello, Mark. I'm a flat earther. The guy on this link is a very legit person. Based on his videos about flat earth, he was also on Patricia's show. Now he came to the realization that we live <clears throat> excuse me, on a concave earth. Mark, I also lost two former flat earthers to concave earth. I tried to understand this theory. But I can't, but after seeing this guy talk like this, it's scaring the hell out of me. Please help. And by the way, this is Neil from Boston. Okay, let's take a look at the video real fast. And the video is called Concave Earth Clues. It looks like a... It's just a part of Brian Mullen's Force the Line. Brian Mullen assists Flat Earth realize just how foolish, foolish, foolish we were. And it's from Flatpool. They got me. I mean, Brian Mullen's not a concave guy, but whatever. Doesn't matter as long as it's not a globe. If you want to go more concave, that's fine. Although concave has a massive, massive problem in that it would slope upward and eventually you would see continents actually go into the sky. Uh, this one's called Dr. Steve Debunks Flat Earth. Mark, the most famous doctor debunks Flat Earth. I am not a troll. I just think he is the world's best doctor. I love Dr. Steve Brule. He has over 600,000 views. All right, let's click on this. And I, I've gotten emails from this guy before. It's called Dr. Steve Brule investigates flat, investigates space flat earth debunked. And it's on the subtle infinity channel. Oh, shocking. Uh, it's also from July of 2017. And yeah, not 
not sure what to tell you here. <laughs> Why would you send me a video that was two years old? Uh, if you're going to send me stuff, seriously, if you're going to go after Flat Earth at this point, it better be recent. Uh, this one's called Watch Gravity, A Theory of Deception on YouTube. Uh, let's see, Mark, it's elegant in its simplicity. I got a lot of links this time around. This one was done. <laughs> Great, it's an Eric Toubay video. It was published June 2nd, 2019. Gravity, A Theory of Deception. Again, not knocking uh, Eric's content. Eric makes some good videos. Sure, no question. It's I have no problem with his Flat Earth videos. In fact, I've never criticized a Flat Earth video he has made that's stuck to Flat Earth. It's when he goes after uh, demographics, when he decides that Jewish people are a problem and should be wiped out. It does not jibe well. And again, for a Buddhist yoga instructor who's also a Flat Earther, you'd think that he would be somewhat sympathetic. I mean, how many neo-Nazi yoga instructors are there? that are living in Thailand. I think only him. But but thank you for that. This one's called Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. I'm new to Flat Earth and have some questions regarding it. It would be great to hear back from you. And that's from Mark McKay. Okay. Uh, did I write him back? Uh, send. You know what? I'm going to write this. It'd be great to hear back from you. You know what? I'm going to write him right this second while I got, while I got you on here. I'm going to say reply. I'm going to say, yes, please send your questions. Mark. I put an exclamation point on the end of that, so I'm hoping I'll get some questions from him today. This one's called relative density versus gravity. Hi, Mark. There seems to be a lot of questions about relative density versus gravity at the moment. I would like to share my view. When talking about relative density, you must take into consideration whether it's a gas, solid, liquid, magnetic, or electric. These are all states that interact differently and all rely completely on the medium in which they meet each other. A simple rating of zero for equilibrium is positive rating for that which is heavier than the medium in which it finds itself and a negative rating for that which is lighter. There is no necessity for any force involved as it is all determined by the condition and interaction within the medium itself. As an example, if I jump out of an airplane at, at 14,000 feet and free fall in the star position, <laughs> you just say when you hold your arms out, but it doesn't really matter. Free fall, unless you're a skydiver, in fact, you may be a skydiver if you're, if you're using the, this, these terms. Uh, I reach what they call terminal velocity, approximately 125 miles an hour. Yes. I can then dive in the head down position to accelerate to 200 miles an hour, like birds. Yeah, I get it. Uh, in a short period of time and quickly go back to the star position to reach what they call terminal velocity, <laughs> which is 125 miles an hour. Okay. You realize you've repeated yourself there in like two sentences, but that's okay. All that changed was wind resistance. The current world speed record for a skydive uh, is 373 miles per hour. Cheers, Greg Thomas, Sunshine Coast, Queensland, Australia. And, and that's the whole thing. Okay, a couple, couple things. I, I appreciate your information on the skydiving stuff. Great, fantastic. Um, however, and you're, and you're absolutely right. Density, you know, we're living in a thin version of water. You guys have heard me say this many times. And things like, you know, you blow up a helium balloon and you let it go, it's going to rise up. Why? Because the helium is lighter than the, the nitrogen and oxygen that we're breathing right now. Remember, it's mostly nitrogen. Got that. However, density can't account for everything. So, for example, um, if you're in <clears throat> a, uh, a car and you're, remember, it's an enclosed car, and I'm not saying it's completely airtight, but it might as well be, and you punch in the accelerator, something is pushing you back into your seat, and it's not the density that you're flying through. You could say that if it was a convertible and you had no windshield, but if you're in an enclosed car, the density is not getting through. You're not getting a whole bunch of added nitrogen and oxygen hitting you. Um, and if you say, well, that's not a good example. I'm okay, fine, take a fighter plane, which is sealed it's absolutely airtight and you're flying up you're, you're pulling on the stick and uh, you're going straight up well what's burying you into the back of your seat similar to like a car only going vertical it's not just density remember i believe in gravity uh i do i believe in it because 
my excuse is that science will tell you, we can't tell you what gravity is, we can only tell you what gravity does. We can only tell you the symptoms of it. They say it's a magical magnetic force that's pulling things down to the center of the Earth. And I say, well, okay, in a flat world, it's just a magical magnetic force that are pulling things straight down. Either way, it's a, it's a push. And that is, they can't explain it, and we can't explain it because we can't replicate it right now. So I'm okay with it. But thank you. Thank you for the email on that. It's awesome. Uh, let's see here. This one's called Second Peter three five biblical. Mark Tony from Denver. I recently found this Bible verse, Second Peter three five, uh, three. I'm sorry, verses three to five. But they deliberately forget that along that long ago by God's word the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. I think this pretty much explains how flat earth was built in case anybody ever asks you that's from tony thanks tony that's good this one's called sunset in the northwest hey mark thanks for all the work you do i would appreciate some of your input here strange world is great and let's see it's an article what's the article called it's called how does the location of sunrise and sunset change throughout the year advanced and it's on a website called ask an astronomer okay this is an example of an astronomer doing a poor job explaining direction of sunset. The sun sets in the northwest on the summer solstice no matter where you are in the map. <clears throat> Excuse me. If there were two hemispheres, this would be the opposite in the south and it would set in the north, south in the summer. The northwest sunset seen everywhere on the supposed globe around this time of the year doesn't make sense. My brother, who spent some time in Alaska, is convinced the northwest sunset he saw is the product of the globe. However, on a globe, I, it would set slightly southwest of the northern hemisphere and slightly northwest only in the southern hemisphere. Any thoughts, Mike? Uh, yeah, we don't know exactly what's going on with the sun and, well, I mean, the northern hemisphere, the, we have no problem with that. I mean, the sun just moves closer if, it, if it's traveling around like a mobile above a child's crib. It's the Antarctic sun, and I'm really surprised more trolls, Joe. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I gotta pause and get a drink. Um, the, uh, it's the Antarctic sun. I mean, really, trolls, if you're out there, you want to go after us on a regular basis, go after the Antarctic sun. Because either... Either somebody's lying when it comes to the Antarctic sun footage, which very, very might be possible, or there's more than one light source out there. Because even in our model, you can't have a 24-hour sun with just one light source. Because the light source is just going to go away. Uh, because it's not a globe. And uh, so whatever's happening out in Antarctica, good thing it's locked down. Good thing that treaty's in place. Because otherwise, we'd have to deal with it. This one's called... You never... You're never really outside in a video game, are you? And that's from Eurogamer. And it's an article. I got so many links this time around. And it's on Eurogamer.net. You're never really outside in a video game, are you? And it's from Christian Donlan. And I may have to read this article. I love video games, as you guys know. And I am going to read this article. I'm going to save it off. And uh, maybe I'll read it next time around if I really like it. I had a good feeling about it. <clears throat> this one's called Arrested on Facebook Live. Hi, Mark. I know you're probably, you probably have a lot of fan mail. And I understand if you don't see this, I wanted to share with you the event which took place in Marquette, Michigan days and weeks ago. Days and weeks ago? So, which is it? Uh, I am still yet to be provided a jury trial. You haven't told me what you've been arrested for. <clears throat> Uh, not trying to bother you, but I was curious about your thoughts. I'm not afraid of anything, but I'm trying to be more impactful for the message about those detainment prisons. And that's from Ryan. That is one of the most cryptic emails I've seen in a while. Okay, you don't know exactly when the arrest happened. Uh, you're yet to be provided a jury trial. Are you currently being held right now? And if you are, why do you have internet access? and email access and let's see here the message about those detainment prisons are we talking about the fema camps uh, what are we talking about here and you didn't sign your name and i'm only saying that it's ryan because i see this up with your email address up above 
you know, the, we have that technology now. If you if you don't leave me your name, just you guys know, you email me, it'll pop up, it'll show me your name. It's not because I'm a government agent. It's just what Comcast does. So don't know what's happening, Ryan. Got to give me more, more information for that. And by the way, if, if, if you're being held for a jury trial, you got to tell me what it's for. Okay, this one's called The Truth Quest. You know what? I'm going to save that for the end. I'm going to read that at the end. This one's called MSG Sphere Venue in Las Vegas Moving Forward with Contractor. And that's from the newspaper Las Vegas Review Journal. Let's see what article that is. Yep. Uh, yeah, they're going to build a giant globe in Vegas. I don't know exactly how they're going to build it and what it's going to be made of. The builder of the Las Vegas... Okay, so it would be uh, the Mask and Square Garden Company on Monday, said Los Angeles-based, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be a globe venue. Shaped like a globe, it's going to hold 17,000 people. And that's it. That's that's all we know, is they're going to build this giant club. Cool, may have to have a conference there in Vegas. That'd be kind of fun. It's going to take a while to build, though. This one's called Under the Dome Documentary. Hello, Mark. I am in the process of watching the documentary just to clear something up. Is there land beyond the walls of Antarctica like birds set or not? And do the other planets like Mars even exist? Silly question, but I want to learn more. I always had a feeling from a child that the world was not a ball. It does not make sense. Thanks for your time, Charlotte. And I forwarded Charlotte the link to BehindTheCurveFilm.com because she watched the clues just now. Uh, called and and one of the versions of the clues that got out there that was mirrored by somebody I never did figure out who their name was uh, is called Under the Dome Full Documentary, which a lot of people, including D. Marble, mistook for uh, the making of the television series, which was written by Stephen King called Under the Dome, and I watched actually some of it, and uh, they uh, and it turned out to be the Flat Earth Clues, so that's kind of fun. This one's called Inquiry. Mark, after discovering you, discovering you recently, I have a question in regards to the current administration's plan to have deep space exploration revisited. Why do you think they have created the quest at this time? Uh, it's just another space beat. That's all the, every space story you ever see at this point is the same thing, which is we're going to go, we're going to go to space. We're going to go to space. We're going to go to space. Nobody ever goes. Nobody ever goes. Nobody ever goes to the moon. Every president since Reagan has said we are the United States is recommitted to the moon. There's never been a manned mission. And oh yeah, by the way, I've got to mention that the Israeli thing, which I, I love so much. Um, in that the when you go in, there's only when you look up uh, world space programs, there's only six countries listed that even have launch capabilities, and yet. And that was as of last year, 2018. And then Israel, out of nowhere, just this year, sent a probe and crash landed it on the moon with no video, no still shots of it of it actually crashing on the moon, no proof of it at all. And nobody even questioned it. It's like they're they're not even supposed to have launch capability. And and here's the weirdest part. They didn't even up they haven't even updated the wiki page to reflect this. Because technically, Israel now should have launch capability. It should be on this list with the with the big players like JAXA and China and and India and the United States and, and the Soviet well, what used to be the Soviet Union. Well now it's Russia. Uh no, it's it's not even listed. It's staggering to me. All right, this one's called New pick. Hey, Mark, Sean Rose from Greenwood, Indiana here again with a new pick. I'm getting votes out there for meme of the year. Hope you dig it. Would love to see it added to your collection. As well, always keep it flexy. That's from Sean. Yep. It's a, uh, that's another Pulp Fiction one. Very good. Thank you. Uh, let's see. You know what? This one's going to take a while to read. So let's, let's read this one and we'll end on this one. Uh, it's called Truth Quest Calgary Survey Results. Hello everyone, I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank all of you who responded to our survey, all of the feedback we received, both the positive comments as well as the constructive criticism will assist us greatly in the planning of any future events. Personally, I would just like to express my deep appreciation for your support of this conference. As many of you know, this is the first time I have organized this type of event, and I thank you for your patience and understanding for any shortcomings due to my inexperience. I value your suggestions and as most of you have expressed a desire to attend another conference, I look forward with great anticipation to the planning of the next Truth Quest Calgary. Here are a few of the highlights from the survey. 
So the question was, and this is all being done by uh, Sarah Stewart. She was the one uh, who, again, first time out, stellar. I mean, she is one cool customer. It was just amazing. You know, she, she did that conference up there, and it was just flawless. Well, they, I mean, Robbie had some audio problems in the beginning, but Robbie always has uh, audio problems. Uh, and it wasn't his fault, by the way. So what were your favorite parts of the conference? And it's in this list. Uh, and I'll just read them one by one. They're not in any particular order. Uh, the interactions with the speakers and other attendees. Mark Sargent. Uh, the presentations, all of them were great. Jared's talk, I could have listened to him all weekend. Everything was great. Robbie talking Bible and scientism. That's Robbie Davidson, by the way. The warmth and friendliness of the people. Uh, the LGBTQ agenda and Emily's personal story. Fellowship and the speakers, of course. Matt Long's high view of the Bible. The long breaks and variety of topics covered. <laughs> the long breaks. <laughs> that's a positive. Uh, Sarah's intros and her story. That's Sarah Stewart. Meeting Mark Sargent and Robbie Davidson. Being surrounded by like-minded people that believe similar things, specifically conspiracy theories and scriptural truths. Meeting other speakers and Nathan Reynolds' testimony. Yeah, Nathan Reynolds did a wonderful job. And I hear he is going to be speaking at the Dallas conference, which will be great. I'll be there. Uh, all the great Flat Earth information. The entire conference. I enjoyed very minute, every minute of the conference. Uh, if I pause, you know, if it sounds a little out of place, I'm just reading down this list of people that made great comments. It was great that the speakers and Sarah were readily available for questions and discussion in between. All the presenters were fantastic, and I would be happy with any or all of them at a future conference. Uh, when the scriptures were being opened and examined, just the fact that there was a conference that could that took Flatter seriously, yep. Uh, my favorite part of the conference was the environment of the people, being open-minded and able to ask lots of questions. Seeing people that I'd only seen on YouTube in person, yeah. Uh, Christ is the center and his word is truth. Blessings to all, and until next time, Sarah Stewart. Yeah, that yeah, was great. Uh, the Calgary conference, in fact, let me, before I shut this thing down, uh, let me mention that the Calgary conference was just the third one this year, and I'm pulling up the list. Uh, see, I'm going to be in Indiana in the beginning of July, and then there's a Take on the World conference, which is August 22nd through 25th, the Stockholm Gather conference, which is not a Flat Earth conference, but I will be speaking on Flat Earth. There's one speaker for Flat Earth. It will be me. That's September 12th. Uh, the UK conference is September 13th to the 15th, the Mount Shasta conference, September 18th through the 23rd. Amsterdam is going to be September 28th. And of course, the big one at the end of the year, Dallas, November 14th and 15th. So no matter where you are, there's something heading your way, I think. And uh, I want to thank everybody that sent in questions. Remember, if you want to send in questions in the future or comments, or if you even want to troll me, I don't mind. Uh, and I'm cutting this out a, a little bit early today because I, I want to get back to the book. I've, I've got a few chapters left, and I got to get a draft out because I got to have I'm gonna have my book done before the uh, the conferences start firing up. Uh, anyway, you can send your emails to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's m s a r g e n t 23 at comcast.net. Until next time, guys. Stay flat. <laughs>